I'm the oldest and I'm in charge. Well, you're not doing a very good job of it. Just trust me. Hi, Mr. Everett. Well, hey, it's Peggy, Mary Lou, and Bunny, my favorite family. What can I do you for? How much to mail this to Denver? It has to get there fast. Well, let me see. So how are you all getting along these days? Two of the cows wouldn't get up this morning. I think it's milk fever. But the other cows are fine. We've got plenty of milk and some real good cheese this week. Well, I will just have to stop by and pick me up some. Uh, did you want to send that first class? Yes. Okay, that'll be $5.78. Is there a sixth class? Uh, let me see. Um, hmm. How much you got? Two dollars and five cents. By golly, that's gonna do it, and with two cents to spare. All done. Ought to be there by Friday. Thank you. Bunny, give Mr. Everett your nickel. I thank you. And this is for you. Thank you, and can you please mark it fragile? Will do. What do you got in here, anyway? Hope. It's no secret, I don't care. Gonna shine it out of everywhere. I love my baby, hot, cold, fast, and slow. where this should go. Oh, I believe it is already there. I thought you liked antiques. I do. True antiques have character and uh, provenance. Provenance? A history, yes, a story, a pedigree. But junk is, well, just... Trash waiting to be made into treasure. Trust me, this will look great on one of those blank walls that you keep staring at. Well, I don't see the point in decorating in temporary space. Oliver, you're gonna have to face it sooner or later. Old DLO space is now the new online shipping room. We're not going back there. without anything in it. Right, it's very avant-garde. Who's ever looking at it will see whatever they want to see. I would like to see a picture in it. You said you wanted to break out and try new things. I did. Yes, you did. At least let me get it centered. Ooh, did you know that four out of five post office brides marry outside of their own zip code? It's a new world, Rita. 
Believe it or not, there's nothing pending in the pending box, and all the bulk mail has been debulked, so it uh, looks like a light day. Oh, well, I suggest we take an early lunch. Oh, well, Ramon bought a new restaurant. It's very cool and very chic. It's called Bistro Ramon. We could go there. What's the matter with the mailbox grill? New horizons, Oliver. Just let me hang this, and then we can... Uh... Uh, perhaps we should measure first, and then we can find... Find the stud. Oh. Uh. Huh. There's a new horizon. Water leak has gotten into everything. I wonder if. Uh... Oliver, there's undelivered mail here from 1999. It, all the zip codes are addressed to. 82474. How did you know? This is the lost mailbag of Harry Snap. <gasps> He's real? I always thought he was just a legend. Oh, yes. Who's Harry Snap? Uh, Harry was a mail carrier, something of a disagreeable loner who suddenly disappeared about 18 years ago. Yeah, postal lore has it that he would spend his lunch hours hiding somewhere in this building, scratching off lottery tickets and entering magazine contests, and then one day he just didn't show up. You may already be a winner. Sounds like he finally hit the jackpot. Huh. He never found his last delivery. Well, till now. Mm -mm. It's mostly just waterlogged right now, and well, magazines and junk mail, and the occasional. Oh! Oh! Wow! Antique porcelain vase. <laughs> oh. No, just the wall. Uh, structural damage. Um, define damage. Any sign of an address? No, the postmark and address are gone. Then we are now obligated to return it to the sender. Senders, there's a partial return. Peggy, Mary Lou, and Bunny? Something County Road. Something, something. Well, facilities and maintenance can have a crew here by the 13th. Excellent. Next year. Well, then we shall take matters into our own head. Oh, my. <laughs> Uh, Norman, extraction kit, please. Careful, it's waterlogged and may disintegrate. <laughs> oh, Norman, handwriting? Uh, it's dated 18 years ago and written with a fountain pen, but the handwriting is adolescent female, 10, maybe 11 years old. A child who values the written word. Well, why don't I start? Uh, dear sir, I am sending you this base because we really need to sell it. When I called you last year, you said you thought maybe it was worth some money, but you'd have to see it first. So here it is. You also said you would have to know how old it is and where we got it, and the whole story of it. So here it goes. We live on a farm. It is very hard work and hardly anybody has a real farm anymore. But my mom says that's the way we've always done it and that's why our milk is the best and that nothing beats happy cows and hard work and hope. But that's where the vase comes in because times are bad again and we are almost out of hope now. We are a family of farmers. Our family has been raising cows and selling milk and making cheese for more than a hundred years. The women in our family always have girls and they all grow up to be farmers, except every once in a while, a girl gets born who just wants adventure. That was great-grandmother Betty. When World War II started, great-grandma Betty left the farm and joined the Women's Army Corps. Everybody understood why Betty ran off to join the war, but all the women in our family are farm folk, and maybe they wander sometimes, but sooner or later, they all come home. 
When Betty went to war, she got married to an army captain, and the man who married them gave them this face as a wedding present. She didn't bring her husband home. Just the vase and a baby. That baby was our grandma Isabel. Five generations have lived on this farm with this vase, and we all believed what great grandma Betty had said, that the vase was probably worth a lot of money. She called it our just in case vase. <laughs> we could only sell it if we really, really didn't have a choice. But if we were the strong American women we were raised to be, we would always think of something else before it came to that. And we always did. One year, we practically lost a whole herd of jerseys to a cow epidemic. Sometimes a bad year meant we just ate eggs and peanut butter and cans of soup so the cows could have hay. But they never sold the face. Sometimes there were tornadoes and droughts and blizzards and floods. Sometimes we had to trade stuff away, but we never sold the vase. But six months ago, Daddy died in a tractor accident in the West Pasture. And that's why we're in trouble now. Our mom and dad really, really loved each other. And... Our mom and dad really, really loved each other. And she's still so sad she can't get out of bed. And Peggy and I are trying to take care of Bunny and the cows and go to school and trade milk to pay the bills. Then last week, a lady came from the social services and asked where our mother was. We told her she was sleeping and she said she'd be back next week. So if we can just sell the vase, we can pay the bills and Mama will feel better before somebody comes to take us away. that's all there is. I hope that there's still... Um... How old would she be now? Oh, about 28. Ms. McInerney, would you do some research on 100-year-old family farms in the area? Norman, uh, let's clean up that mess and figure out what to do with the room. And Rita, will you take photographs of the vase and make a few copies and then lock that vase away in the safe? Wherever the... Safe is now. Oh, got it. No, um, if the vase truly is from Europe, then I doubt we'll be able to trace it back to some dairy farm in, I'm assuming, Colorado. Well, if it was misaddressed and returned to sender, then Mary Lou would never have heard back from Dear Sir. So whoever Dear Sir is, I'm sure she, you know, called him or wrote him again to try to track it down. An art dealer, perhaps. Mm-hmm. There can't be that many in Denver. Oh, well, there's 87 in Denver proper. In Metro Denver, uh... Point taken, Rita. Then let's narrow that down to European porcelain specialists. You guys remember my cousin Serge? Serge? The one who entered a monastery in Minnesota? Little Brothers of Perpetual Frost, yeah. Oh, he's relevant to this conversation because because he has a twin, Igor, and he's the associate director of decorative arts at the Colorado Museum of Fine Arts. He always really liked bowls and pots, and they got lots of pots there. Oh, look. He used it for, uh, hacking. Hmm. Persephone, three-quarter bucket, didn't drink, seems dehydrated. Venus wouldn't pasture. Penelope, Minerva, Electra. It's, seems like some sort of cow diary, I think. Oh, it says, see attached vet prescription. Well, maybe the name of the vet can help us locate the farm. Mm. Second page is missing. It must have fallen apart, but though it looks like it was stuck together long enough for some impressions to get transferred. I might be able to pull something off of that if I had a bigger lab and a laser and a spectral imaging system, but the budget mm -hmm. only approved a paper shredder this year. Well, there must be some government agency to whom we can turn. What about Dale at the State Division of Investigations? Ah, well, there's, there's a thought. She's still a special agent there, right? A very special agent. 
gonna give her a call right now. <laughs> Do you really think it's a good idea for Oliver to be reaching out to Dale? Oh, absolutely. And you go with him. <gasps> and she's uh, really smart. She has a photographic memory. And she was Miss Special Delivery, and we like all the same things, the same music, and the same books, and everything. <laughs> so when's the wedding? Well, it's still pretty new. I haven't even met her family. Mm. Just wait till they meet ours. <laughs> <laughs> well, the style certainly seems to be 18th century Rococo. So it's either quite valuable or an excellent reproduction. Mm. We're not actually interested in value. I am, kind of. We're looking for an art dealer in the Denver area that might have specialized in 18th century porcelain and been interested in buying or selling something like this 18 years ago. Well, there aren't a lot of those around here, but I can try to put a list together for you. That would be great. Thank you very much. Oh, just a quick question. If we were interested in the value of the base, <clears throat> what would be a ballpark figure? Well, if it's genuine and it has a verifiable provenance, it could be worth a great deal. Five or six hundred, baby? Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, not that much. Uh, 250, 300,000. <laughs> if Dale can help us out, perhaps I'll see another farm. I've only been to one once uh, when I was a Boy Scout. Rita? Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, I was just thinking about Dale. Dale? I imagine she'll be back any minute. You know, I... I always wondered if... you two had been a... thing. <laughs> a thing? Well, uh... You know, we've always been good friends. Mm -hmm. There... Uh... Might have been a time where I... Uh, but she didn't... But then she, uh... Uh, but th then I was... Uh, uh, do you mind if we change the subject? No, sure, okay. Oh, my parents are driving their RV up from Albuquerque to meet Norman today. Really? Mm -hmm. Does Norman know? No, it's short notice, and my parents are very spontaneous. And if I told Norman, he would get that tummy thing he gets, you know, when he's terrified. Yes, unremitting convulsive stomach syndrome. You know him so well. <laughs> Anyways, I just thought... If I didn't give him time to think about it, then he wouldn't have time to convulse. It's very thoughtful, Rita. Thank you. So, spectral imaging is going to take six weeks, but I do have a friend in digital resonance who was able to pull a few words, um, antibiotics, appetite, nothing that helpful except a partial phone number. Oh, wonderful. Mm, and the prefix and area code matches Byers County. Oh, well, that... Narrows it down, at least. Hmm. Thank you very much. Oh, so happy to help. How is Norman? We're engaged. Oh, that's wonderful. Congrats. Thanks. Um, and, uh, and how is Shane? Well, things are good. Uh, she's good. Mm -hmm. mm. Good. Mm -hmm. I I'll just meet you outside. Sure. Hi. <clears throat> Oliver, it's okay to say it. You and Shane are... Uh, a thing. An early thing. I figured. And you know what? It's... I, I'm really happy for you. I, I think you need somebody like Shane to... shake you up a little. You think I need shaking up? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> you and I, we... we solve our problems by knowing where the lines are and following the rules. And Shane, well, she colors outside the lines. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> but if you put the two together, you've got... A mess. Or maybe something beautiful. Where's Rita? 
Oh, uh, she's on her way. She stopped by the DLO to drop off a piece of evidence. Evidence? So you really are like detectives. Uh, yes, but postal. A a and you're Rita's boss. Well, we're all more like colleagues. Ms. McInerney and I, and Norman and... Uh, What's the deal with Norm? He's a good man and uh, dear friend. I would trust him with my life, Mr. Hayward. You can call me Bill. Oh, I had an Uncle Bill, William O'Toole. Well, Bill, short for Bilbo, you know, like in The Hobbit. You have to add the goat's milk first, then, then the whey and the cactus root. Hmm, I'm a little short on goat's milk. Almond milk. Goats, almonds, they're all God's children, right? So this is a popular cocktail in Albuquerque, you say? Oh, yes. It's called an Area 51. You don't know what's in there, but one drink and you know something weird is going on. Oh, and then I met Evelyn, Sonny, and we decided to change our names the summer of 69. Everything changed, 69. How is it you uh, came to choose the name Sonny, Mrs. Haywood? Well, we met during the summer of love in 67 when I was Evelyn, and for a while I was Mystic Harmony. And in 69, we went to Woodstock. And it, it rained and rained, and we didn't see blue skies for days. And finally, Billy said one morning, the only sunrise we're going to see today is the sun in your eyes. Oh. And I became sunrise. Sunrise? Sunny? That's wonderful. You see, now there really is a sunrise in there. Take it, take it. Oh. See that little? Yeah, well, all right, see a little gold flack right there? Uh, you see? Yeah, here, look. See? Norman! Oliver, you're Norman, never gonna guess. Norman! Oh, oh. Watch it! Meet my parents. Oh. Uh. Yeah, oh, you're just so adorable. But I can see you. I, I'm really sorry that I blended your glasses, Mrs. Haywith. Hey, Sonny, they got the birds on here. Beetles, the monkeys, the turtles, <laughs> the animals. All the musical species of the 60s. Is that a joke? Maybe. So, you're from New Mexico. Land of enchantment. And some enchanting land developer wants to turn our RV park into Wally's wacky waffle world. You know, we're so thrilled. For Norman and Rita. Norman actually reminds me of a small woodland creature. Thank you. All right, so I found a glasses place down the street that's open till five. Oh, oh perfect. <laughs> Daddy, let me see the ring. Oh, uh, uh the, the ring that, that Norman got me? Well, who else would give you one? <laughs> Wait, well, uh, he hasn't given me it yet. <laughs> I have it. Well, I bought it. I just, um, I put it in my pants. I mean, I, I put it in my pant pocket, and then I changed my pants when I went to see Rita to give it to her. And then when I got home, I was so happy, I forgot, and I sent all my pants to the laundry the next day. Well, not all my pants. <laughs> <laughs> We've uh, contacted the laundry service, and there's been a, a rather extensive search over the last few weeks. So, it's lost. No, 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 no. We're fairly certain that it's somewhere at Tony's Tip Top Cleaners. Yeah, I go there a lot to look around. Uh. Norman's described it to me, Daddy, and it sounds very beautiful. It's in the shape of an owl. An owl? Oh, how precious. Honey, you always loved owls. Billy, mm -hmm. hasn't she always loved owls? Yes. Will you excuse me a moment? Uh, I have to walk around a little. Uh, of course, darling. Uh, <laughs> Is he okay? Yeah, yeah, it's just usually he's a little more... Engaging, he just... Sometimes when he's surprised, he, he gets the irks. <laughs> irks? Unremitting convulsive stomach syndrome. You're marrying a guy who convulses? Hey, what's, what's that? Oh, <laughs> nothing. Come on, Sonny, let's, um, let's go order your glasses. Mm. Come on. We'll see you later. <laughs> this way, this way. Maybe I should have given Norman a little more notice. Oh, I don't think you could have prepared anyone for this, Rita. 
Jane McInerney? Yes, hi. Okay, can you send those to me? Great, thanks. Thanks so much, Igor. Well, Norman's cousin has some leads for us. Ooh, great. So this is the vase. Wow. No wonder she wanted it back. Way back in 99 or so, my dad started getting calls and letters from this little girl who said that she'd sent us a vase to sell. Dad didn't know anything about it, but she swore she sent it. Looks like it got lost in the mail after all. We are trying to correct that. He said she'd call every week, and then every month, and then every couple of years till the calls just kind of stopped. Did she ever leave a number? Actually, yeah. And dad kept it pent up behind the counter forever, but when I took this place over, I sort of cleaned house. We have a partial phone number from the same area. Is there any chance that you might remember the area code or the prefix? I, probably not. It was up there for so long, it was just kind of part of the wallpaper, you know. Wait, isn't this the area code for Byers County? Yes, yes it is. Edgewood's in Byers County, isn't it? Edgewood, yes. Okay, because I do remember my dad saying, that kid from Edgewood called again. Does that help? <laughs> Very much. I'd really like to know how a kid from Edgewood managed to get a hold of something like that. Well, all we can tell you is that it, it had a very loving home. Well, take good care of that vase. It probably belongs in a museum. And if you do find the owner, and she is still interested, we'll buy that in a New York minute. My dad's coming in today to see what we can do about that room Supervised you smashed your way into. Hmm. Don't you mean the room into which I smashed my way? <laughs> <laughs> or <laughs> have I finally broken you down and ruined your love affair with the English language? I can't imagine you ruining anything. Anyway, Rita's parents are dropping by today, so that's perfect. What is perfect? Did you notice yesterday Mr. Hayworth had a present that he wanted to give, and then after he met Norman, he decided not to give it? Mr. Hayworth doesn't like Norman. Well, everyone likes Norman. Norman isn't engaged to everyone's daughter, just Bill's. And every father wants what's best for their daughter. Norman is the best. Norman's what's best for Rita because he gets her and Rita gets him. But Mr. Hayworth doesn't get that because he doesn't get Norman and he's not going to get that without help. So I have an idea. Perfect. Yes, may I speak with the postmaster, please? Oh, yes, I'm calling from the USPS DLO in Denver. May I ask how long you've worked at the Edgewood branch? And this is the unattached objects area where the oh. contents have become separated from their address and they require special handling. Oh, yeah. Norman is very good at special handling. <laughs> is that a guitar? Oh, yeah. You wouldn't believe what people put in the mail with just the stamp. Coconuts, bricks. Oh, Norman even delivered a giant bear once. Oh, stuffed. I really miss that bear. Good news. We may have a lead on our dairy farm. The Edgewood Postmaster is expecting us at two. Wonderful. Oh, uh, did you know that Edgewood, Colorado is the site of the smallest museum in the state? The International Museum of Barbed Wire. 16 square feet, well worth the drive. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Rita, how far would that drive be? Oh, uh, 87.5 miles without the toll roads. There isn't much we could do around <laughs> here without Rita. <laughs> Where did she get her photographic memory? Well, her grandmother memorized the entire 1972 federal tax code. Mm. So I guess it runs in the family. <laughs> <laughs> do my kids, Norman? Oh, yes. I was one once. I liked it. Is there any insanity in your family, Norman? Uh... Anybody here? Cleanup committee has arrived. Mr. Hey. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. Oh, Rita's weird hippie parents are visiting. And Norman broke her mother's glasses and her father doesn't like him now. Got it. Dad, these are Rita's parents, Sonny and Bill Haywood. 
This is Joseph O'Toole. Oh. No. Uh, just call me Joe. And, uh, Sonny. Lovely to meet you. <laughs> Same here. Congratulations. When I heard the news about these two, I gotta tell you, I... Hey. Hendrix. Were, were you at that concert? Oh, front row. No, kidding. Me too. <laughs> For heaven's sake, you're practically family. <laughs> Can you handle a drill, Bill? I build furniture in Albuquerque, yes. I weave. I'm a weaver. Well, perfect. What do you say we old peaceniks uh, show these kids how it's done, if you've got a little time? Norman, why don't you just tell us where you want us to start? Oh, well, I, I thought we could clean up the new room and turn it into a nice office for Rita. Mm. Excellent idea, Norman. Brilliant. And, and maybe a meditation space. Mm. Yeah, I'm thinking a waterfall of hanging bees Divide the space up. <laughs> Oliver would love that. Well, I think we have a plan. Rita, uh, do you mind if I steal your folks for a while? Ooh, please. I mean, of course, of course. <laughs> Great. Can you guys go deliver something. We'll, we got this. <laughs> yeah, follow me. Okay. <laughs> They're so great, aren't they? <sighs> here it is right here. Sign there and... Thank you. Mr. Everett. Oh, I'm guessing you must be Mr. O'Toole. Yes, and these are my associates. What can I do you for? Well, we are attempting to deliver an object that may have shipped from this office 18 years ago. Oh, I can hardly remember what we shipped yesterday. Um, do you know who shipped it? It's a small community. I don't forget my neighbors. Uh, we only have first names. Uh, Peggy, Mary Lou. And, and Bunny. Yeah, the, the Kelser family. Oh, you know them? Been around forever. Are they still a family? Yeah, the family's down on Candy Road, 119. Can't miss it. And they still live on the farm? Well, at least until Saturday. That's a long story. I, I put the ring in my pocket and then I, I lost it. Is there a hole? A what? I had chicken feed in my pocket one time, but there was a hole in my pocket and the seeds went all over the floor. Oh. Huh. Want to see the cows? Oh. Oh. Well, you know, we would love to, <laughs> but we really need to talk to your mom. My mom drove to the drugstore, but she'll be right back. You can meet Aunt Bunny. She is right on the way to the cows. Oh, good. Well, we'll just stay here and wait for your mom. What did you say her name was again? Peggy. I'm Abby. Great. Okay. Um. <laughs> oh. And this is Suki. She is very stubborn. She likes to be milked last. And Arabelle is always wandering off. Polly's really sweet, but she has to be the first one out of the parlor or she'll stay in there all night. Wait, uh, you allow Polly to sleep in your living room? <laughs> no, silly. The parlor is where the cows get milked. Silly. You can pet her if you want. <laughs> It's all right. There's a bunny. Race to the farmhouse. Uh. 
I am very proud of you. I know that wasn't easy, and all you want to do is uh, <clears throat> wash your hands right now, right? Was that that obvious? <laughs> no. I just uh, know you that well. <laughs> Ms. McInerney, would you like to go steady with me? Oh, why, Mr. O'Toole, this is all so very sudden. Oh, you're serious? No, no. Oh. No. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, well, I, uh, I told Dale we were uh, a thing. A thing. Mm -hmm. and is that is that different than going steady? I'm not sure. And Bunny says you can sit on the porch and she'll make some lemonade. I'll go get your friends. Oh, I forgot to mention that Polly likes to hear music when she has her babies, so don't forget to sing to her. Oh, no. She, she thinks we're here to buy the place. Listen to that. This must be what heaven is like. I hope not. It's too much work. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hello. You must be Abby's grandmother. That's right. Kim Kelser. Abby says your name is O'Toole? Yes, Oliver O'Toole. This is uh, Ms. McInerney. And your granddaughter thinks we're here about the sale of your farm, but we're not. Oh, well, actually, that's a breath of fresh air. What brings you here, then? Well, we are from the dead letter office of the U.S. Postal Service. We found something your children may have mailed to a Denver art dealer 18 years ago. The vase? Yes. It is safe and in good condition. We just have a few details we need to clear up first. Do you believe in God, Mr. O'Toole? I do. Good, because you just might be the answer to our prayers. Oh. Wow. Apparently, they'd sent the vase to an art dealer Mary Lou had found in the phone book. It took a lot of courage for them to admit what they'd done. But Mary Lou took the blame. And all she said in her defense was, was that she was trying to save the family. And that's the day I got out of bed. I got my act together, and I never looked back. I never cared if I ever saw that base again, until now. Because we have to move. I never thought I'd hear myself say this, but if there was ever a time I was tempted to sell that base, it would have been now. But I didn't have it to sell. And the new folks come up the road. So if, if, it, uh, if it really is worth some money, there wouldn't be a better time to find that out. Well, it, uh, it will need to be appraised, of course. And we do have some indication it's maybe worth quite a great deal, if it is genuine. To, uh, and of course, we'll have to come up with some sort of way to authenticate ownership. There aren't any receipts. It was a wedding gift to my grandmother. Oh, we have a picture. That's right. Abby, would you go find that old scrapbook, please? Mm-hmm. A photo would be great, and then we would just have some forms to be signed by all three senders. What do you mean, all three? Well, the box was marked return to sender, and in the case of something so potentially valuable, we would need the signatures of all three names on the return address. <sighs> Peggy, Mary Lou, and Bunny. We haven't seen Mary Lou for over two years.
Mary Lou has quite a way with words. She wrote a beautiful letter. Yeah, she did. If it's not sweet enough, you can put in more sugar. Oh, it's just right there. Thank you. If you put in too much at first, you can't fix it, but you can always put in more. That's just the way I make it, too. <laughs> Peggy! Peggy! Guess what? The male people found our base! Huh. So you're saying there's actually someone in Denver with an offer to buy it? I believe the exact quote was, in a New York minute. Well, then it must be worth something. If it's authentic and not a reproduction. Mm -hmm. An authentic what? We're not actually sure, but our friend at the museum said it could date back from 1700s. Wow. And then there's the matter of um, ownership. Well, it's ours. That picture will prove it. Nevertheless, the return address indicates that the vase was mailed by three individuals, so we require a signature from all three in order to release it. Well, I'll sign something. Funny. They need you and me and Mary Lou. <laughs> Leave it to her to complicate things for us, even when she's not here. Peggy. Um, is there a way that we could contact Mary Lou? Well, she's really busy. We send emails that never go through. We send letters to a P.O. box that she's never in the country to check. She sends us postcards, fruit baskets. No, she hasn't quite thought to send us an actual address. And even if she did, get a letter that we sent her, and even if she stopped following our heart long enough to read it, and even if she did sign your papers, and even if she managed to send it back, I doubt any of that would happen in time for us to sell the vase and get the money so that we could pay our taxes and our bills and save our farmhouse and let our mother die in peace. I found it. Ah, could you show it to us? Um, maybe inside while the grown-ups are talking. Oh, wow, that looks old. <laughs> OK, bye. OK. Thanks, Bunny. Peggy, our problems are not their problems. They're just trying to help. And for the record, you all followed your heart. You followed your heart, and when your heart got broken, you brought all the pieces back here, and this place put you back together again. Bunny's followed her sweet little heart, even if it only goes as far as the back fence. But she loves the animals and the peace, and it makes her happy. And you do well, Missy, to find a way to make that kind of peace with your sister. I apologize. It's been a tough time. Uh... You understand? Peggy X angry, but really she just misses her little sister. They were so close until that face went missing and things changed. Maybe now. <sighs> Did you drive a stick shift, Mr. O'Toole? Oh, uh, well, I'm, uh, I'm a bit rusty. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It, it doesn't kill you right away, but it kills you, and there's no cure. Even if we could find the right doctor and the right treatment to slow it down, sooner or later, the bone marrow just stops making red blood cells, and uh, some fancy, expensive vase isn't going to change that. But if it's true, if we could sell it, and postpone the auction, it sure would be nice to be looking at all this when my time comes. It is a truly beautiful place. Abby says that uh, Sookie is stubborn, Polly likes to stay in the parlor, and well, Arabelle likes to wander. It's just who they are. <laughs> They're all different. Mary Lou always always had crazy ideas growing up and always managed to make them work. That's why it was so hard on her when her biggest dream disappeared in the U.S. mail. Well, 
We are so sorry about that. It made us stronger. And it made Mary Lou determined to prove herself. She went to college. She worked for a newspaper and a radio station. And now she runs around the world following war after war and tells stories about folks who are fighting to survive in a lot worse circumstances than ours. When was the last time you saw her? Three Christmases ago. She and Peggy got into an argument about something silly as usual and, then you just and ended up where here. things always I end up. Like what okay? do you want from me? I'm not a farmer, oh, okay? Yes. Well, that is the truth. You're if you just had jealous. them, then maybe you wouldn't have said Oh, great, we're back to the bays again. Yes. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and I'm sorry. I was a 10-year-old kid. I can't keep coming back here just to be put on trial over and over again. I'm out of here. Now there's always a reason why she can't make it back here. She's always embedded with some troops in some combat zone somewhere. Does she even know you've been sick? I, I don't know. I don't even know where she is. So, so peaceful here. Yeah. This is my favorite time of day. When the cows come home from the night, the sun starts to set, the evening comes, and somehow they just know it's time to come home. Someday so will I. I just hope all together when I do. I love that one. Oh, look at that. There's my grandmother before she enlisted. This is her when she was a baby. Oh, wow, she's very pretty. She looks a lot like Mary Lou. Oh. So can you make an exception? I mean, we can prove that the vase is ours, and you have me and Bunny, and that's two out of three signatures. Oh, and look at those shoes. Uh, yes, however, the accompanying letter was written by Mary Lou. I understand the urgency. Uh, this is obviously um, an unusual set of circumstances, but... Okay. I get it. But can you help us track down Mary Lou? Uh, well, from uh, what I hear, Mary Lou could be uh, anywhere in the world right now. But you found us. You must be good. I've got a card. She's an associate news producer at a news agency in New York. But she's never actually there, but it's a start. Um, could you just try? Please. Even if it ends up being too late for the auction, the truth is, it might just be enough to bring Mary Lou home. In time for mom. Oh, here it is. Oliver, look. This is Betty on her wedding day. Oh. There she is. There's her husband holding the vase and their commanding officer who married them, the one who gave them the vase. Where was that taken? France. She was stationed in London and Allied headquarters in Paris. Wow, imagine being in the middle of all that. Yeah. Huh. She was quite a character. To tell you the truth, I always suspected she exaggerated the value of the vase just mm -hmm. to give us some hope. Wouldn't it be something if it turns out she's right? Yes, yes it would. So is that what you needed? Uh, you know, we... We'll have to compare this face with the one that we have at the office. Could we take this with us or perhaps get a mm -hmm. copy of it? Um, I have a copier in the back. Perfect. There, sweetheart. Thanks. We need to leave. Hey! Milk my first cow. Oh! <laughs> wow! <laughs> we might have a problem. Seas must wipe up sail before she can sleep.
sleep in the sand. Yes, and how many times must the cannonballs fly before they're forever land? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. <laughs> oh, way. Bravo! Oh, welcome to the Flower Power Sing Along Hour. Not a lot of help till I get new glasses, so I'm the muse. Well, it's clearly working. Wow. <laughs> Look at this place. Mm. <sighs> it's coming along, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we need your expertise with something, would you mind? Sure. <clears throat> Great song. Yeah, Rita says that she used to sing that to her imaginary childhood friend, uh, Hudson. Hudson the Invisible Owl. She told you about Hudson? Oh, yeah, we tell each other everything. Oh, uh, I uh, brought you some fresh raw milk. Uh, milked it myself. Uh, I know you like healthy things, so. It came from a cow named Petula. <laughs> Yum. Thanks. Yeah, I'll put it in the fridge. That was so thoughtful of him. It wasn't a bill. He milked it himself. Yeah. Well, it's possible. All we know is that she brought it back from France after the war. It looks like the same vase. But even if it was a gift, if it comes through this office, you're obligated to confirm what you're delivering. Regulation 87K, paragraph B. The male recovery agent must pursue all avenues of identification, restitution, and repatriation. Armin is very good at rules and regulations. <laughs> this is so exciting to be right in the middle of the action. Normally, I wouldn't share postal business, but frankly, I need some feedback on how best to proceed. Well, the visa is worth a lot of money, right? Most mm -hmm. likely. And the people it belongs to really need the money? Really, really need it. But the question is, does it really belong to them? Well, when I saw the French flag in the picture, I remembered a course I took in college about the art that went missing during World War II. Some of it was stolen during the German occupation from museums or private homes, and then it was sold or traded or hidden away. Now, some of it has been recovered and returned, but there's a lot of it that's still out there, and people are looking for it. Family heirlooms, old masterpieces. You think this could be one of those stolen pieces of art? Well, if it's from Europe after the war and it's as valuable as we think it could be, then there's a very, very good chance that it belonged to another family that it was taken from. And who knows what happened to them? Hmm. <clears throat> Let's go gas up the Star Cruiser. We're back at it again tomorrow. You got it. <laughs> Good, night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Norman, dear. Night, Daddy. Good night, sweetie. Mr. Hayworth, don't forget your... Oh. Milk. crew is embedded with an undisclosed combat unit in an undisclosed country, shooting footage for a television news special. Does she have an undisclosed phone number? She communicates occasionally through satellite conferencing, but sometimes that doesn't even work. 
Oliver, that's not gonna help. The auction is in three days. However, the news director was willing to try another call if I can make it to New York. Miss McInerney, will you book me a flight tonight? Sure. If it doesn't fall under the task force budget, I'll cover it with the old tool foundation. You are not gonna believe this. Mr. Benson says it's at least 200 years old. And it was probably made for a duke or a prince or a king in Austria. And then it was probably given to a loyal subject and handed down through the generations to... To? Somebody, but it's definitely worth at least a farm and a few years worth of state and local property taxes. So he called the collector who wants, wants to, to buy, buy it. it. <laughs> oh, let's go tell my parents. Oh, okay. I can book you on a red eye that leaves tonight. Um, and returns... As soon as I'm able. Oh, you guys have got to see this. Oh, where did Oliver go? Oh, hold on. Um, do you mind if I take off and work from home? It's, it's gonna be a long night. No, no, of course not. We'll be fine. Okay. Good night. Good night. We could all meet up for dinner at Ramon's later. Uh, I just need to run an errand first. Oh, let me guess. You're going to stop by the Tip Top Cleaners. Uh, no. But I should run. They close at 5. Uh, Joe, will you join us for dinner? I'd love to, but I have an appointment with my accountant. Rain check? Sure. Here, let me help you. Thanks. You coming, Daddy? Go ahead, and I'll catch up. Daddy. Look, I know you don't like Norman. I never said I didn't like him. I don't get him. Well, you would if you tried. You just don't want to. I mean, ever since you guys got here, all he's done is try to be nice. The errand he's going on right now is to pick up Mom's glasses. He invited you for dinner. I mean... He milked a cow. He lost your engagement ring. What does that say about a guy? I'm sorry. It's just, it's not what I imagined for you. Well, you want to know what I imagined for me, Daddy? Mm -hmm. Somebody sweet and kind, generous and unselfish. Somebody who's, who's right there to to pitch in and help when you need it. <laughs> Somebody who thinks that I make sense, no matter what I say. Somebody who doesn't care that I wear glasses because he sees the world the same way I do, and he always tries to find something beautiful in it. He's exactly what I imagined, Daddy. Imagine somebody like you. Forgot my keys. Did you hear any of that? Sure did. I'm thinking maybe you're the one who needs the glasses. Mrs. Hayworth, your glasses. I see you are once again a woman of great vision. Oh, Ramon. You're so... So, so Ramon. I have a very a special table for my little postal family. It will be ready in a few minutes. So anyway, I looked across the Washington Mall, and there he was handing a daisy to a National Guardsman. And then I just knew. Well, same with me. It was love at first sight. Of course, we had a lot of things to work out. The war, Watergate, the Beatles breaking up. Oh. Very hard. Oh, yeah. And of course, there was a moon landing. 
I was for, Billy was against. Oh, interesting. Look, he's a good man, Norman. He's just a sad dad right now. What do you mean? He used to be her hero. Now she has two. Oh, I wish Oliver was here. He knows how to handle these things. So do you. Well, I don't think he's coming. Oh. He may surprise you. Or we'll surprise him. short dinner. I uh, canceled it. Huh? Well, see, I wanted us all together for a reason. But Oliver had to leave, and Joe had an appointment, and Shane had it. Anyways, things don't always end up the way we plan. You know, you put all your hope into a vase, and it gets lost in the mail. You put a nail in the wall, and the whole thing falls down. <sighs> Mm. Fall in love with the most amazing woman in the world. You buy her a ring. You put it in your pocket, and it disappears. You yeah, think you know what happened. And then one day a light goes on, and, and you realize that it fell through a hole in your pants and got kicked under the bed, and you find it weeks later in your snow boot. <gasps> oh! You know, a miracle like that, you want to share with everybody you love over a nice dinner together, but like I said, sometimes plans change. And I don't think that I can let another minute go by without doing this, so. Rita, mm -hmm. this ring looks like an owl, not just because I know that you like owls, but because owls are beautiful and wise like you, smart like you, and they are so brave. It doesn't matter how dark it gets, they just keep flying through the night because they can see what nobody else can. And so do you, probably because someone else who's wise and smart, and brave, Taught you how? <laughs> and now I get to fly right alongside you forever. <sighs> and I am so grateful for that. With this owl ring, I the engage you. <laughs> <laughs> Nice job. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I love you. I guess if you flew all this way, it must be important. It is. Okay, Mr. O'Toole. If she's on schedule, she should be up in about 30 seconds. Thank you. It's a choppy feed, and you only have a few minutes before the satellite passes, so if you could keep it short, that would be great. Here we go. <clears throat> Give me some contrast. Hey, you guys, you there? Got you loud and clear, ML. You okay? Yeah, I got the B-roll you wanted. We're just wrapping up here, and then we're heading stateside. Check. It's uploading. Coming through now. You got a visitor from the post office. The what? Uh, the United States Postal Service, Miss Kelser. Uh, it's a long story, but we've located the vase you mailed 18 years ago to a Mr. Sam Benchon in Denver. You're kidding me. I'm not. Um, it's in good condition, and it's possibly worth a great deal of money. Wow. This is like... This is like the ultimate do-over. When I was a kid, I messed up big time, and I lost that thing. And I never really forgave myself. 
I don't think my family did either. Well, uh, I can't speak for them, but they certainly seemed pleased. You saw them? How are they? Uh, Miss Kelzer, we need a signed consent to release the vase and return it to you and your family. Yeah, just send me something in care of the newsroom and I'll sign it and send it right back. Unfortunately, we're under an urgent time constraint. And under the circumstances, I, I can accept a verbal consent if you're amenable. Amenable? Yeah, I'm amenable. Go for it. And, um, can you give my mom and my sisters my love? And tell Abby Auntie Moose says hi. I will. Thanks. Um, Miss Kelsey. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was told that sooner or later, all the Kelser women follow their hearts back home. If it's at all possible, perhaps you should make that sooner. Why? What, what's going on? Uh, well, um, your family is... Your mother is not... Hello? Hello? <laughs> We're out of range. Well, Interpol, German restitution files, it's all there. I was hoping I was wrong. Well, most people wouldn't even have made the connection. Yeah, I guess, I don't know. I just think outside the box. Which is a good thing. The only thing is now you're stuck with the truth. Yeah, now we have to find a way to break it to the Kelsers. You'll find it. You and Oliver. You'll do just fine. I've forgotten what it looked like. Well, we were hoping it was worth a great deal of money for your sake, and uh, it is. Um, however... Well... We also found out that it's quite rare, mm -hmm. and Mr. Ben Sean has an ardent collector of 18th century porcelain who made an offer to acquire it from you once you were to take possession. Once we were to take possession? Does that mean you didn't find Mary Lou? Uh, actually, I did. I, I saw her briefly on a video conference call. Did she ask about us or the farm or anything? Oh, yes. Uh, we didn't have much time to elaborate, but uh, yes. Mrs. Kelser, uh, in the course of uh, processing this return, we've discovered a little bit about the provenance of this vase. Well, if it means that it's worth a lot of money, that could really solve our problems, right? Well, um, the vase was created for a member of the Austrian royal family in 1748. And it stayed with that family until it was given, ironically, as a wedding gift to a very prominent political family in Frankfurt, Germany, named Rubel. It remained in the Rubel family's possession for the next 72 years, uh, passed down from father to son uh, until 1939, when, um, when the uh, family home and its entire contents were confiscated and all but one member of the Rubel family uh, disappeared. My lord. Yes, that, um, that person was Johann Rubel, a teenager at the time who managed to escape to France with nothing but the clothes on his back and uh, a family photograph. After the war, he made his way to the United States. He worked his way through college, he started a family, and he spent his free time searching for his lost relatives. The only record that he found was an inventory of everything taken by the Germans uh, from his childhood home. Um, the vase was part of a shipment intended for the private collection of a German officer in France, but the shipment uh, went missing and the vase found its way to France. 
and eventually to the American officer and into Betty's hands. Mr. Rubel is now in his 90s and... Um, and we thought you might want to see the base one more time to say goodbye. So we've lost it. I don't believe this. I understand this must be a difficult blow. But there has to be a point when you have it for so long, it just, it, it's yours. I, I mean, it was a gift to our family. We did not steal this. No, we didn't. But that doesn't mean it belongs to us. I'd rather lose this farm than lose my soul, Peggy. I'd imagined you might say that. We are so very sorry. Please tell Mr. Rubel it was an honor to have a piece of his family living with us for a while. I'll tell him. So what do we do now? We'll get up in the morning and auction off our farm and pay off our bills. <laughs> And you'll close things up, and I'll take my medicine, and we'll teach Abby how a Kelser woman lives. And how she leaves. I love it. Such an elegant paradox. A world of possibility inside a simple frame. So very Shane and Ovalier. <laughs> it's such a thoughtful gift. Mm, it was Ovalier's idea. Hey, Ramona, another round of Area 51, please. Of course. Thanks, man. Excuse me. Ovalier. Ovalier. <laughs> what is this? It's from your dad. Oh. <gasps> oh. Hudson. Oh. Oh. Thank you, dad. <gasps> Look. <laughs> Hudson the Invisible Owl? Well, one day when she was sick, she didn't want Hudson to be invisible anymore. So I went to the toy store and I made him visible. Um, found him in the attic a couple of weeks ago. I just thought she should have it so that, well, you know, you, know, you try to teach your kids to love and then you turn into a jerk when they finally go out in the world and do it. Mm. <laughs> Sorry I was so tough on you. I'm sorry, I blended your wife's bifocals. <laughs> well, it wouldn't have been the first time. <laughs> hey, you guys. Hi, Eddie. Mm. Oh. Mm -hmm. So? So? Oh, I've got a present for you, too. <gasps> You're giving us an RV? Just sort of like a honeymoon present. <laughs> We're thinking of getting off the road and settling down around here. Maybe find ourselves a nice Rocky Mountain Geoponic Collective. Mm. Get back to our roots. Yeah. <laughs> you were farmers? Oh, yeah. We lived off the land. We grew everything ourselves. It was compost heaven. Mm. Compost heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we will begin the bidding at. $265,000. Hey, we need $265,000. Do I have $270? We have $265,000. I got $270,000. Do I have $275,000? $275,000. I got $275,000. Do I have $280,000? Hey, we need $280,000. I got $280,000. Hey, we need $280,000. Do I have $300,000? Do I have $300,000? I got $300,000. Do I have $310,000? $310,000. Thank you, sir. I got $310,000. Hey, we need $310,000. Do I have $310,000? 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 Do I have
$400,000 from the gentleman in the back. Got $400,000 going forward and five, $400,000 going once, $400,000 going twice, sold to the gentleman in the back. I'm not sure I understand what just happened. Mrs. Kelsey, you're not just looking at that dead letter office task force in the United States Post Office. We also comprise the executive committee of the Board of Trustees of the O'Toole Foundation. It is a philanthropic foundation begun with funds given to me by a father I never knew, whose uh, unusual success resulted in a rather remarkable uh, fortune of which I am the custodian. So you're rich. Well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Kelser. With your permission, of course, the O'Toole Foundation would like to help you put the Kelser family farm into a living lands conservancy. And this would guarantee, of course, that it could never be sold or developed. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Um, but what's the catch? Oh, Peggy, for once, stop being so suspicious. Well, there is actually a catch. For the farm to stay as it is, it has to remain a sustainable and workable farm and has to expand into an education center that teaches responsible agriculture. Okay, um, we have no idea how to teach any of that. Uh, so uh, we found a very interesting and lovely couple mm -hmm. who have agreed to build and run the educational center. They're actually my parents. <laughs> <laughs> but they know all sorts of things about experimental farming. So you're buying the farm, but you're not buying the farm? Exactly. <laughs> the O'Toole Foundation has assumed all financial responsibility. You are free to live here, well, till, um, until the cows come home. The vase is on its way home, and <laughs> Mr. Rubel sent you an email. Taking walks around the farm, which I plan to do for a nice, long time. And I plan to take some of those walks with you. I'm so sorry it took me so long to get home. Oh, but you did. And it's still here for you. Again. What? We didn't need it. We never needed it. When are you two gonna get that through your heads? We just needed each other. Nothing beats hard work, happy cows, and hope. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, what happened? Oh, wow. My dear Madam Kelser. I cannot begin to express my joy when I was informed today of your kind understanding, but I'm deeply grateful for your willingness to say goodbye to our family treasure. And I'm so touched to hear that while it was in your care, it was a source of hope and inspiration to you and your children. The return of the vase was a noble and righteous act that shall be blessed. Please be assured that it shall be placed in a proper museum with a letter tracing its extraordinary provenance from a great castle in Austria to a, to a little farm, farm in America to remind future generations of a time and a people that must never be forgotten. I shall not forget you, and I send my best wishes to your family. May you cherish every moment you have together for as long as you live. Respectfully, Johanna Rubel. I wish we'd been there when he put that ring on her finger. Oh, I don't know. I think, I think he just needed to go so. 
Maybe so. But going solo isn't always easy, though. Are you saying you missed me? You were only gone for one day, but it did give me some time to think. About? Well, like, uh, what one does to go from being a thing to going steady, you know? Uh, I don't know. Are there really going steady rules? Oh, several. I looked it up. Hmm. Yeah, pretty serious stuff. Stuff like no hanging picture frames with anybody but me. I can pretty much guarantee that. No hanging any bead dividers without prior approval. Mm, I think I can probably live with that. And when Rita and Norman get married, you have to dance the first dance with me. <laughs> 